Hey, hey, hey. Hello. Hello everyone, this is Kim. We are live. I'm just getting everything all situated for us. Welcome in and let me get things going. I am being live streamed. Yes, yes, we're being live streamed. So you should be able to see us now in the Facebook group. As you come on, let us know. Let us know you're here. Ah, trying to type this. You are here. Hello, 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 hello. Let me see. We are now live and get this going. Um, here we are. Lots of different screens to go into. Oh my God. Hello, hello, hello. Let me get uh this going. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim McLaughlin, and we are here for day four of the anti-diet revolution. So excited to have you. Lots of really, really, really important information going on today that I want to share. And we're going to, uh, I like using this PowerPoint. I um, like that it is giving us a little bit of an agenda to use, but also it gives you, for those of you who aren't seeing it, um, Hey, everybody who's saying hi, I really appreciate you being here with us. Um, let me see. I like the PowerPoint because it is giving us um, some, uh, you know, something to look at together. Those of you later that are going to be listening on the um, on the live or on the podcast, it, um, hold on, let me see, slideshow. There we go. Uh, those of you that are listening later on on the podcast or, or on the video um and you don't or you're not on the video there's some um there are some things on the screen we have a powerpoint going on which i find keeps us a little on track keeps me on track and also i'm a kind of a visual learner so i like using this so we're day four of the anti-diet revolution challenge thank you for those who are live i see you i notice you and also those of you that are watching later, because I know a lot of you are coming on later, it's sometimes hard in the middle of the day to make this happen. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Who am I? I am a licensed psychotherapist in the state of California. I am a coach. I help people with their eating issues. So I work with a lot of people in different programs to help them around eating issues using intuitive eating. I am a podcaster with um, Feed Your Soul with Kim podcast. I am a best-selling author, The Six-Step System to Peace with Food. Um, I am a speaker. If you have any speaking engagements, I love to come talk to groups. And lastly, most importantly, should be number one, I am a former long-term dieter. Um, and so I think that qualifies me for being here today. What have we covered this week? And I want you to think about what you've learned and what you've done um, as we've moved through this week. First day, we talked about the diet mindset and why diets don't work, why they set you on this cycle of a roller coaster up and down and all around and all around. We talked on day one about about your diets and for you to recognize how many diets you've been on because really, when we start looking at how many we've been on, it's like, oh my God, I've shared with you that I've been on about four different diets over and over and over again. Same diets over and over again, expecting different results, paying thousands and thousands of dollars, just like the rest of you, trying to get a handle on what food means for me and to stop um, overeating. So um, I just found it didn't work. What what does work is what we call intuitive eating. And we covered some of that in day two. Intuitive eating is a big, big subject that we just kind of scratch a little surface. I wanted to give you a little, a little taste of it. And when we looked in day two about measuring hunger with intuitive eating, it's really about getting back in touch with your body and what 
does your body want? What does your body need? Because we lost that a long time ago through, um, I told you some of my story is, you know, I was fine with food. And then at about age eight, my parents got divorced. And I then remember, I remember the memories of being obsessed with food, obsessed. I could tell you story upon story about my obsession at a very young age, eight years old. I started on my first diet um, at age, about age 10, where I had used what they used to call a diet plate. Oh my God. It, I tell the whole story of that. If you, I have a video actually, where I talk about my history, that, that part of dieting, it was pretty, it's pretty sad being 10 years old. Um, and having that as what I ate when we went out pretty sad. And, and so now what I know of is how to connect back. And so you can see, what was my point? My point was, is that on day three, we talked about emotional eating and that obviously my emotions, when my parents got divorced, weren't dealt with, we didn't talk about it. And it turned out to end up being an overeating. And then the dieting kept me very, very disconnected from my body. And so what did I learn how to do? What do we know how to do in our society is we just diet some more. That's all we do. We diet some more. And then the emotions got in, in charge. And so I would overeat when emotions were showing up. So day one, we looked at how, what was our diets? Day two, measuring hunger. I hope you're doing that. I hope you're starting to take that deep breath and notice how hungry am I? How full am I? And start just noticing your body and noticing what's going on. Um, the physical hunger is a starting point for fueling our body, for feeding ourselves. And then the third day we talked about emotions and, and starting to recognize and name the emotions. That was what day three was about. Today, we're going to talk about this, this part. I think that's like the connector, the connector of all of it. And this is about self-care and it's not one of my six components to end emotional eating, but it is baked into every one of them. I'm going to just use food analogies or food words as we're talking today, I guess. So uh, self-care needs to be baked in the six components, physical component, emotional component, mental component, lifestyle, mindfulness, self-love. And self-care, what I've found and what I work with people in my Emotional Eating Solutions course is we talk about self-care with each of those six components. So it's interesting to me because if, um, if I'm having a physical challenge, it might be a different self-care technique that I do than if I'm having more of a spiritual or mindfulness challenge, right? I do different things. And so as we start to look at what helps with different difficulties, um, we find that we can't use a, a one size fits all kind of, um, strategy. So uh, we're going to look at that a little bit more today. What I want to first, when I thought about how do I introduce the idea of self-care, because blah, 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 self-care, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we hear about it all the time. And, and you know, I, I want to try and what I want to put out to all of you is that there's something that goes on when we're lacking self-care, there's a problem. And I thought of the idea of nourish. Oh my gosh. I did write that wrong. <laughs> Nourishment versus um, being hungry. Oh my God. Nourish versus nurture. I can't believe nature versus nurture. That's super funny. My, uh, for those of you who are not seeing my screen, it says nature versus nurture. That is not what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's nourishment versus nurturing. And what happens is, this is too funny, is that when we get those nurturing and nurture or nourish ourselves, my God, nourish and nurture ourselves. This is hilarious that we get them mixed up just like I'm getting them mixed up right now is we don't know, we start using food to nurture ourselves food to nurture ourselves. And that's not what food, I mean, food, yes, it is nurturing, 
but really the primary foundation of what food is about and your meals are about is to nourish your body, nourish your body. And I think about eating yummy food, eating satisfying food, eating not too much, but not too little, eating enough and eating the right foods. Because when we nourish our body, that's that physical component we were just talking about earlier when we talked about the six components. When you nourish your body, you have the fuel to do the things you need to do. You have the physical energy, you have the mental energy, you have the emotional energy, you have the spiritual energy. You need to have a body that is nourished. And one of my many, many, many challenges with dieting is that that's not taken into account about what nourishes your body. And really, when we get back in touch with our body, we start asking, what is going to nourish my body today? And this, once again, is a whole component we have in Emotional Eating Solutions about nourishment and and not what the types of food, but how do you get back in touch with your body? We became disconnected at eight years old. I became disconnected from noticing what nourishes my body. I was looking at food to nurture me. I, I the, the wires got crossed. They got crossed in me. And I suspect in all of you too, because everybody I've ever talked to, this is one of the problems that happens is we don't know how to nourish ourselves and we get scared about eating food. I can't have that. That's not the wrong food. That's bad food. I can't have it when it's what we really want. And when we follow a diet, they tell us what we need to eat. So there's never this internal check. We have this whole strategy within Emotional Eating Solutions, a strategy of how to connect in with your body to recognize what is your right food. And that's really separate from a nutritionist because I am not a nutritionist. I'm a psychotherapist. I'm a coach. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. And those are the people that might tell you, you know, in terms of the, the types of food that you need, these are the types of food that are necessary. A lot of times your body recognizes it, but there are some times where, you know, if you have diabetes, obviously you have to go to a nutritionist that will help you figure out what is your right food, right? Because um, it's a little different because your body's not metabolizing the way it does in other people. So nourish your body with food. Nurture mind, body, spirit. I talk about how we fuel our soul, fuel our soul. Um, all of my URLs have feed your soul in it because it's really about that deep inner connection, that deep, deep, deep inner connection. So how do we start nurturing ourselves is really the strategy that we want to go to. So I hope you buy into the idea that we need to nurture ourselves with self-care and then the nourishment will take care of itself, right? And that then becomes the question is how in the heck do we do that? And first, what I always like to come back to is noticing something's off, mind, body, emotion, spirit, like something's off with me. One way to notice that you need more nurturing of yourself is you're, you're overeating. You're obsessing about food. Something's wrong. I don't feel right. You're off mind, body, emotion, spirit, and just start noticing that that's the starting spot. So overeating obsessed about food. The other things that come into play is if you're feeling really worried, if you're feeling unfocused, if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling overwhelmed, all these things that you go, ah, something's off. Um, I even do it when um, that nurturing with self-care, when I'm feeling angry, when I'm feeling frustrated, when those kind of uh, harder uh, emotions come out, like, hmm, I wonder what, Kim, what do you need? Kim, what do you need to nurture myself? Um, some of you might go, I have plenty of self-care. I'm doing this. But really, how are you doing? And are you really taking care of yourself? And I was thinking of this idea, am I second on the list? Am I second on the list? Or maybe even not on the list? Am I second? Am I maybe less than second? Or am I not on the list? And I definitely have times where 
everybody else that I um, that is around me becomes way ahead on the list ahead of me. And I then begin to feel angry, frustrated, resentment, overloaded, can show up in overeating, but it just doesn't feel right within me. So I have to start thinking about how do I put myself first on the list? How do I put myself first on the list? And using a wellness tool to nurture yourself is a way to put yourself first on the list. For that time, you're doing these wellness tools and nurturing yourself, you're number one. So how do you do that? You guys know a lot of things on the list. Um, and I, I just, I shared a few. Walking, talking with a friend. Decluttering has been a huge wellness tool for me recently. I love decluttering. Journaling, that's also another one of my favorite wellness tools. Um, nature, being out in nature, having positive self-talk, um, uh, meditation, prayer, all those things are nurturing yourself. And that is the time where you put yourself up at the top of the list and go, I'm number one. I'm number one and I'm going to do this. So notice how much you're doing that. Are you really doing it? Are you doing enough? Because what I think of is it's like taking a um, drinking water all day. Water is a wellness tool. Um, but it's like you got to do it a lot during the day, building up that muscle, that nurture muscle. So sometimes we'll look at, oh, I've done it today. I uh, What did I do today? I did a, um, a little uh, meditation. I did two meditations, short meditations. And uh, am I built up enough for the day? No, no. There are two little two minute meditations I did to kind of boost up my energy. I took a little walk. I'm going to do more. So I have to have things on my list to do in my wellness toolbox to do multiple times a day to build up that nurture muscle. It's critical. And truthfully, if you want to end overeating, it's one of the key components. One of the key components. So how do you do that? Is you develop a wellness plan. What will you do on the regular? What will you do normally to take care of yourself? What do you do to nurture yourself? Because when you're nurturing yourself, I promise you're fueling your body differently. You're fueling your body differently. You're taking care of that nourishment in a different way because you're feeling better about yourself. It's a huge, huge, huge tool. Um, so what do I want you to do? Remember when we talk about what um, all of these ideas, if we're not in action, if we're just in our head thinking about it, going, yeah, 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 Kim, that's a great idea. I'll do that later. No, no, no. We have to do these wellness tools regularly. So I want you to do something. Commit to one thing you will do today to nurture yourself. Commit to one thing, just starting today. What's one thing I'm going to do? Um, Kim, for me, what's one thing? In it? I'm going to actually do another meditation later on today. So that will be, um, I'm doing a program where I'm doing multiple two-minute meditations throughout the day. And I got to say, it's really building up that nurture muscle. So I am going to do that today. I'm committed to that. And, and as you do your one thing, do it on a daily basis. And do it. So like we have, what do we have? We have a couple of days, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, we're coming back to our bonus Q&A. So do something for the next four days. Start doing something and build up that muscle. Um, I actually have a list of my wellness tools. I have a physical list of the things that I do that if, you know, when all else fails, Kim, do one of these. And I literally have a list because sometimes I forget. So let's make the commitment. I would appreciate, I think it's the best thing to do is in the Feed Your Soul Community Facebook group to let us know what you're doing daily. What is your wellness tool? And I'll put a, a post in there to, um, to spark all of your brains. When we join in community, when we join in a community, I'm working with a community right now on doing uh, daily meditations. And we commit to each other each day that we're going to do it. So when we're in community together, there's more likelihood we're going to do it because not that I have to do it for them, but, but I feel seen. I'm seen more often. So do that. 
post in the Facebook group what you're going to do. Tell somebody, I'm going to take a walk today. I'm going to write in my journal today. And then celebrate it. I should put that down too. Celebrate. I did my walk today. I did write in my journal today. I did call a friend today. And start making that list so you have your list of these are my go-tos, the things that work for me on a day, on a daily, regular basis. Because I promise you, sometimes life gets really tough and we forget. I forget, we forget. So let's just do that. If any of these things are fitting for you, I, I don't want to leave you hanging. And I know some people have been asking me about Emotional Eating Solutions. I promise you today, I will go into the Facebook group and I will post the link to it. Because um, in on the page, you'll see the landing page, you'll see all the pieces of it, what it's about. It is a, a, a do-it-yourself um, program where you get um, links every week to listen to my talks about all of the six components. And then we on, add on wellness tools. We add on um, how to get this um, started and also how to keep it going and how to do it in the future. So it really is our signature system to help you move out of overeating and into a place of peace with food. All the things we've been talking about these last four days, we go into depth in that group. The thing that I've added for all of you is I'm going to start doing a live round coming up in, um, in about a month. I'm going to start doing it. So when you sign up now, you'll be in that. You'll actually get started now on all of the courses that are already pre-recorded, so you can get going today. And then when we do the live rounds, you can come on the live rounds and get an even deeper understanding. The other thing we have um, on the regular in Emotional Eating Solutions is once a month we have a Q and A with me, so you can talk about what's going on and what is um, confusing and what's giving you. Um, struggles because it's really hard to move out of dieting. It's really hard. And I acknowledge that because we've been trained how to diet. The other thing I decided to give to everybody who signs up within this time of this, um, this challenge is a bonus 30 minute coaching call with me. I never do that. I, I don't remember the last time I've gave given that away. So that's, um, it's 350 for an hour with me on my coaching calls. So it's uh, 30 minutes. That's incredible. So that's an incredible gift that you get to use as you start or in the middle or towards the end to get your clarity on emotional eating solutions. So think about it. If this program has been sparking your ideas and going, uh, I need some help. I want to, I love the picture of any of you who's on the videos like the woman kind of holding her going, oh my God, this is, you know, things kind of feel out of control. If that's how it feels for you around food, emotional eating solutions is the winning, is the way to do it. We still have more to go. This has been a half, this has been a quick half hour, a very, very quick half hour, but we have more. We're meeting one more time on Monday, the 6th of February at one o'clock Pacific. We're going to answer questions for you. We'll be there up to an hour with your questions. You can, um, I think what I'm going to do is we'll go live in the Facebook group, um, not do it over Zoom also. So we'll just be in the Facebook group so I can see the questions on the chat as they come in. And then you can also send in, um, if you sign up and got our email, you'll get a link to the, um, to the question and answer. Actually, I'll put it in the Facebook group the link to the Q&A so you can ask your questions in advance because I know not everybody can attend live during the day. I get it. There's really never a time of day where I can satisfy everybody and get everybody on a call. So I like to do it this way, have it live for those who can attend, and then you can watch the video back. So I will put the link in the Feed Your Soul community Facebook group and you can use that link to ask your question about every, anything that's been coming up because I want you to leave having a lot of things um, kind of more formed in your brain, okay? Thank you so much for being here. This has been so good. I would love to know the takeaways from your challenge. Put them in the Feed Your Soul community Facebook page info at feedyoursoulunlimited.com. You can send us an email to let us know what you thought. DM me on Facebook. I love hearing what you got from this. And I want you over the next few days until Monday, focus on self-care. 
And I want you to focus on self-care and notice how nurturing yourself, how that feels for you. And how does that help with food, right? How does that help? Um, it's the, not the totality of helping taking care of what's going on with food, but there. Uh, but it's super valuable. So do your self-care. I'll put some ideas in the feed book, um, in the Facebook group about ideas about self-care so you can start having ideas. I also like having people post what they do for their self-care, how they nurture themselves, because it reminds me of some things that I've forgotten. Um, it's been, uh, lately I've been in a group where they talk a lot about, I told you about decluttering, and that has just been a game changer for me with the decluttering. So having this group of people who talk about how they're doing it and how it's nurturing themselves has helped inspire me to do that too. So let's be that for each other, that community. Thank you guys for being here today. I know there are a million other places you could have been. And thank you so much for showing up. I look forward to seeing you on Monday and we'll see you over the weekend in the Facebook group. Bye guys.